Good evening. The January 19, 2023 board meeting is now uh, beginning. Joanne Medina, would you take roll call vote, please? Mr. Farr? Present. Mrs. Hall? Present. Mr. Reno Mita? Present. Mrs. Sandoval? Present. Mr. Fuentes? Present. Mrs. Flores? Present. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we're on item 1.2, Renewal of Pledge of Allegiance. I would like to ask Mr. Gregory Fong to our brand new Assistant Superintendent of Business to lead us in the flag salute. <clears throat> the United States of America is the republic for which it stands, no nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You'll be hearing a little bit about Mr. Fromm uh, a little bit later in the meeting, but um, I was very surprised about our uh, new person because I actually have worked with him in the past, what, 20 years ago? <laughs> and lost touch, but it was it's nice to have you here. Item 1.3. Oh, um, tonight at the meeting, there's we have an interpreter, Cynthia Bueno, available for Spanish-speaking persons wanting assistance. Thank you, President Thorin Ojeda. Good evening, everybody. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Yo soy Cynthia Bueno, a traductora y recepcionista del distrito. Esta noche estaremos ofreciendo servicios de intérprete. Si alguien desea escuchar la reunión completamente en español, pueden buscarme en la mesa trasera y tenemos los dispositivos donde pueden escuchar la reunión simultáneamente. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. Item 1.3, adoption of January 19th, 2023 agenda. Could I please have a motion to adopt the agenda with the following amendments? Amend action item 5.31, approval of personnel employment and resignation separations, revision to the effective dates of certificated hourly slash substitutes, and amend closed session item 9.9, .9, personnel public employee, appointment, discipline, dismissal, release, government code 54957, Addition of one certificated coach, head varsity swim co-ed. Addition of four classified coaches, head varsity baseball boys two, swimming assistant co-ed, varsity soccer assistant girls. Addition of one volunteer, mental health intern. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. All second. I have a motion by Mrs. Haro and a second by Mr. Fuentes to adopt the agenda as recommended. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. All those who wish to abstain. So on a motion by Mrs. Haro and Ms. Board Member <coughs> Fuentes, the board adopted the agenda as recommended, 7-0. Item 1.3, where are we going to do these before the, yes, we can before the comments? Where's comments? It's supposed to be just past the first. So we're not going to do comments. It's not on there. Where is it? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was six zero. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Item 2.1, Colton High School. I would invite Principal Abbott to introduce students to present. Good evening and happy new year, everyone. 
we would like to begin our showcase and I will introduce our amazing students led by our activities director, the amazing Ms. Buck Buzzkirk, Duke Alessandra Brasario. Good evening, Board President Thorin Ojeda, members of the board, Superintendent Miranda, Executive Cabinet, and community members. My name is Alessandra Billy, and I'm the Renaissance President here, President here at Colton High. Here I am joined by... My name is Duke Medina, ASB President here at Colton High School. My name is Rosario Ornelas, and I'm the Junior Secretary here at Colton High School. I'd like to begin this showcase with images from Colton's colorful celebration for Hispanic Heritage Month. On October 14th, our students celebrated Hispanic culture with lunch activities like treating themselves to candy tables, competing with their peers in a friendly game of Loteria, and filling a poster used to pay homage to one's Hispanic heritage. During lunch, students also enjoyed a performance from our very own Los de Cero Cinco. Colton High School was extremely proud to be able to host the East-West All-Star Game. Two of our boys participated in the game and played a big role in the, in the success of this team. Colton Suchel at the left tackle position and played all game long and helped in dominant offense zone. Xavier Sandoval stayed and played all game long as a cornerback and locked his side of the field down. Next up. I'd like to highlight the All Schools Award Ceremony on December 2nd. On this day, Renaissance leadership, with the help of ASB and Link Crew leaders, decorated Colton's multi-purpose room into a spooky Nightmare Before Christmas scene. With the help of Miss Durham and a few student MCs, one being yours truly, Renaissance hosted a successful award ceremony. PBIS medals and certificates were awarded to 105 students that displayed PBIS characteristics. 94, 95 students were awarded Student of the Month, which included a certificate and an exclusive CHS Student of the Month lanyard. During this award ceremony, Renaissance took the liberty of creating a fun and interactive rally style event. Students participated in games like Guess the Character, Pin the Nose on Zero, and Cup Stacking. Overall, it was an eventful and exciting ceremony like no other. As you all know, the month of October is National Bullying Prevention Month. During the week of October 17th to the 21st, Colton High hosted Unity Week events in order to permit and promote anti-bullying. Students show their support for this movement by dressing according to the Spirit Week. On Monday, we wore a, short, a shirt that expresses kindness. Tuesday, we matched with a friend. Wednesday, we wore orange in support of bullying prevention. Thursday, we wore tie-dye to represent peace, and Friday, we wore a tire that represented the city of Colton. In the month of October, classrooms participated in the PBIS door decorating contest. This was another activity that was put on in support of National Bullying Prevention Month. The winner of the Unity Week door decorating contest is featured on the left. This door belonged to Link Crew in room 505B. Later in the month of October, students spent time with our Officer Eli of Colton PD in order to create a safer and more comfortable bridge between students and law enforcement. On top of this, Colton joined schools across California to practice earthquake and disaster safety on October 20th with the annual Great Shakeout. The Colton High Multipurpose Room has been officially named after Dr. Tom Rivera in a dedication ceremony on October 18th. During the ceremony, multiple, multiple student groups, such as cheer, co contributed to the ambiance and hyped up the crowd. Their ceremony fittingly honored the wonderful and hardworking Dr. Tom Rivera. Next up in October, Colton's Highs, 9th and 10th graders completed their PSAT in preparation for their SAT in their junior year. Colton's Heal Pathway organized a shoe drive to raise money for events, rewards, and scholarships Heal students are offered. The collected shoes were sent to an innovative and equal friendly company, Got Sneakers. Next up, I'd like to share the activities Ren and ASB put together to show appreciation for Colton High's dear custodial staff. Renaissance and ASB leadership students decorated and created gift bags for the custodial staff at CHS as a thank you for all their hard work and support at events. 
gift bags had a water bottle, special CHS custodial staff shirt, and other little goodies. Everyone was served Olive Garden and a delicious dessert. And now for athletics. In the fall, football and girls tennis made it to the CIF round two playoffs. Our principal's award was given to, to cross country and girls tennis in honor of their amazing performance and hard work. On top of this, our cross country's very own Brianna Jimenez, pictured in the middle, made it to CIF finals and placed, placed seventh overall. On the next slide, we are shown Colton's boys and girls basketball, boys and girls soccer, wrestling, and competition cheer. The varsity girls basketball team placed third in the Thanksgiving break tournament, and the JV boys basketball team placed first in the same tournament. Okay, now time for some fun. At this time, for those of you who would like to participate and have a mobile device, please take it out. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So we're, we're going to test your Colton knowledge with a little trivia. First place winners gets awesome Colton gear. And here's a link for you guys to join. Oh, oh well. If you go to kahoot.com or scan the QR code, you will be able to um, put in the code. Yeah. Oh, that it. Okay. <laughs> yep. First question, what is the current mascot's name? Watch it be Miss Bertha. I mean, when do you like it? Question two, what class gifted the bridge at CHS? Ooh. <laughs> 
Any class in any For me. For me. Who is Ken Hubs? No, bro. bro. Oh. <laughs> Our third place winner, Rena. Second place, Izzy. And for the first place winner is Murphy. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. So we're in a third place. That's a good question. Our board member Israel Fuentes, is second place. And Miss Joda Murphy, first place. Back to our presentation. So, our cheer competition team took first place at a competitive shark competition, ranking them a step closer to the CIFs in which they will be competing against different teams this Saturday at MLK High School. Next up, Lean Crew conducts freshman follow-ups every first and third Wednesday of the month, as well as celebrating a freshman student for student of the month. On the next slide, the Drama Club launched their Haunted Maze for Halloween, which was open for the whole school during both lunch times. Our CHS counselors hosted this year's college fair where students got the opportunity to join and be involved in clubs, outside programs, or other fun and interesting opportunities. On top of this event, we had one of our very own student grupos playing music and hard tacos given to every student. Up next, the CHS Gaming Club competed in eSports at CHS on PlayViv's platform in which they made it to round one of playoffs in the first season. Students who competed used the Nintendo Switch and played Smash Bros. Ultimate. Next up, CHS set for Solar Boat competition in 2023 with the Steam Club advisor, Mr. Heron. For the next slide up, Link Crew hosted a cocoa and cram sessions for freshmen in order to help them with their semester one final exams, which the students greatly appreciated. As the holidays approached the CHS community, we all came together and held multiple events where students were able to embosk in the holiday spirit. These events, these events included a canned food drive, a toy drive, a holiday spirit week, and our winter wishes program where students were given a Google survey to ask for something for themselves, a friend or a family member, and a reason why they deserve that gift. 
Um, our CHS staff worked hard on fulfilling as many wishes as they could and passed and passed them out before the semester ended. On December 8th, our very own Win Ensemble Choir and Choir gathered in the Rivera NPR to give an entirely free performance to our beautiful Colton community. Throughout this great show, the performers wowed the crowd with multiple iconic Christmas songs. While this winter concert was free, the band's booster club sold fresh hot chocolate with toppings, along with raffle tickets for prizes, including gift cards, a Beats audio headphones, and even a 32-inch HD television. Colton High's LGBTQ plus students received an opportunity in the Wellness Center during lunchtime to, during lunchtimes to discuss the issues of importance to them. Tea Time, hosted in conjunction with, Pride, with the school's Prideful Club, provided LGBTQ plus students a safe space to explore concerns surrounding coming out to friends, family, and their community. Our wonderful Renaissance organizations continues to work hard year long. Throughout this semester, Renaissance recognized birthdays for staff and students for the months of October, November, December, and January. On December 12th, Renaissance also hosted a luncheon with Panera Bread. And lastly, of course, Renaissance leadership continues to recognize staff with Staff of the Month by surveying the, most of the students on campus. The HEAL Pathway actively partners with the California University of Science and Medicine. Volunteers from the university come and collaborate with our Healthcare Collaborative Club, where volunteers come once a month to run amazing workshops with us. CHS HEAL Pathways students were able to tour the CUSM campus and participate in fun activities like suturing and entering their simulation lab. Colton High School continues to host successful step up, step up Saturday school days where students can study and or make up attendance. The last step up Saturday school of the semester had over 250 students in attendance. A CHS was offered a free trip to Cata Disneyland Leadership Conference on November 1st for five awesome ASB leaders. These ASB leaders went to workshops to learn more about how to increase their campus engagement, collaborated with various schools, participated in lunchtime activities with vendors, and learned about new items for events, and even got to watch an engaging motivational speaker. On extended period days, we continued to spend time dedicated to learning our PBIS expectations such as drug awareness, what respect means on our campus, and how to act with integrity at all times. Colton Dunkin' Donuts invited CHS, CHS staff, students, band, and cheer team to the grand opening and ribbon cutting ceremony on January 7th. Important members of the community, such as Mayor Frank Navarro, Councilmember John Echavarria, Dr. Luis Gonzalez, Board Member Israel Fuentes, and many others attended this fabulous grand opening in support of this new and promising business in Colton. As a way to show their gratitude, Colton's Dunkin' Donuts generously donated a $500 check to our school, which we accepted gracefully. Thank you, Dunkin'. Upcoming activities and events. On January 23rd and 24th, we have our incoming freshman orientation. On January 25th, we are hosting a CHS Community Skate Night where all profits go to the class of 2023 for our senior activities for the end of the year. Um, basketball Future Yellow Jackets Night on January 25th, the same day. Senior Picnic on February 2nd. Renaissance Award Ceremony for Semester 1 on February 10th. Winter Rally on February 17th. And our Winter Dance on February 18th. In March, The Heel will have their blood drive on March 9th. Lean Crew will also hold a synergy the same day. Prom Fashion Show will be on March 10th, and our CHS Powder Puff game will be on March 17th. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. It's amazing how high schools um, have all the time that you do to get everything done. It's just great job, very good presentation. I have to tell you, <laughs> schools have changed a lot since I was in school <laughs> because when you pulled this up, I'm going, now my five-year-old great-granddaughter might be able to do it, but I couldn't do that. And uh, it's just, we are so fortunate to have the wealth of information at our fingertips. 
uh, in our society today. And I'm so grateful for our schools who are spending time teaching kids to do all this and to make use of the information. Um, I just am excited to see the kind of future that all your kids are gonna have. So I'm real happy to be part of our district that's providing so much for our kids. So do we have any um, comments for our students tonight? Mr. Fuentes? Yeah, real quick comment. Thank you very much. Uh, you guys did a great job. Duke, I know you are. Love the hair, bro. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Alessandra, uh, Duke, and Rosario. Thank you for bringing the presentation. You guys did a great job. It's always great to know the exciting things that are happening, the things you're doing for the community. Let's keep doing that. I support you 100%. And to all of our athletes out there also at Colton High School, keep doing what you're doing too. And to our teacher, Ms. Bus Buskirk, and our principal, John Abbott, thank you very much for your leadership. And uh, let's continue to do great things at Colton High School. God bless you guys. Thanks. Mrs. Flores. I just want to thank you for your presentation. Um, you gave us some, um, it, it's very evident that you took great care in putting this presentation together. And get, you gave us a really good glimpse of, of what you know, your school is like in every aspect. So thank you for that. And um, here we are in January 2023. You only have probably five months left of the school year. And I know you guys have plans for the remainder of the year, and we are really looking forward to seeing what you have uh, coming up. And I just want to tell you, just enjoy your time. Enjoy your time at your school, because it's it, once it's gone, it's gone. So these five months, just have a great time. Focus on your academics and, and just have a good balance. And uh, just thank everyone. Thank your teachers. Thank you for your, to your principal. And uh, no, overall, thank the three of you. Thank you. Anyone? <clears throat> Anyone else? Did you say it's gone up? Oh, Mrs. Saro, I'm sorry. I just want to thank you for your presentation. It seems like a lot of uh, fun activities, very well-rounded activities are happening at Colton High School. And I know that keeps students involved. I especially want to thank you though. I know a lot of times we do things during Teacher Appreciation Week for our teachers and different times of the year. But I really want to thank you for doing the custodial event. That was so wonderful for you to do that because um, it takes a village for all of us to work in the school district and and um, we need to remember those kind of things to thank everyone who participates because um, they help keep your school clean and they are very, very important to our school. So I just wanted to say thank you for remembering them because um, I don't think we've ever had a presentation where a school has done something for their custodial staff. So I think that's very special uh, for you to do that. So thank you. Um, thank you for having us again, and we look forward to the next one. Thank you. I'd like to invite Mr. Abbott. Could we have the students come up and shake our hands? The kids did a great job. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. <clears throat> We're now at item 3.1 introduction of new management. Assistant Superintendent Dade, would you? Oh, you. Introduce our new management, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, good evening, Board President Thorin Ojeda, Board Members, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, and members of the audience. Um, it is my pleasure and honor to introduce and welcome some new family members to the CJUSD family. I'd like to first start with Patrick Yamakawa, our new Operations Manager.
So Patrick um, comes to us with a multitude of, of experiences, professional experiences. Um, he was a general service supervisor for Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transit. Um, he was a lead custodian at Hacienda La Puente. Um, he was a supervisor of maintenance and operations for Orange County Department of Education. And most recently, he was the manager of maintenance and operations for Yucaipa Cala Mesa Unified School District. Um, Patrick um, has a wonderful family. Um, he has a new addition to his family of uh, nearly 20 months, Nora Rose, and uh, almost two. It's almost two. So you heard about the terrible twos? Okay. Like, we got an old ancient um, trick in our family, licorice dipped in NyQuil when they get too rowdy. <laughs> Come see me if you need that. But uh, I'm <laughs> just joking, just joking, everybody, just joking. So, uh, but licorice does work. Um, so other than that, um, Nora is very happy and uh, Mrs. Yamakawa is very happy that um, Patrick will be able to work closer to home because he lives here locally in uh, Riverside. Um, they like to travel and um, they have visited just in the last year, Cancun, Las Vegas, Mexico City, and Maui. Um, their favorite place, our Patrick's favorite place, I think, was Italy. And so um, definitely uh, that's some exciting places to visit. And if you didn't know, there's a little touch of Italy in San Bernardino here at a restaurant called uh, Alfredo's. <laughs> and they're guaranteed to make you say, Mamma Mia, after you taste their food. So, uh, so we'll have to make sure Greg and David take you over there. It's supposed to be pretty good. So, But uh, now I'd like to go ahead and give Patrick a, a few moments to uh, address the board. Okay. Um, thank you for that introduction. Um, thank you, board members, cabinet members, and Dr. Miranda, right, for giving me this opportunity here uh, to be in this position to support this district, support the school sites and the students in the community. Um, looking forward, right, to doing all that I can for my time here in Colton, which everyone since month, last week, Monday, has been very great in welcoming me here. So thank you very much. <laughs> and one more round of applause, please, for Patrick. Next, I'd like to introduce our new Assistant Superintendent of Business, Gregory Fromm. As you can see, me and Gregory have the same barber, so I'm nice. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Gregory um, comes to us with an extensive background as well. Um, he was uh, definitely had several years of teaching. Um, he was an assistant principal, middle school principal, um, he was an alternative ed principal, independent study, and home and hospital principal. Um, he's been an assistant soup in a variety um, of um, seats, um, administrative services, human resources and operations, business services. Um, he was also an acting superintendent, and most recently an assistant superintendent of business um, in Linwood. And so Greg is from New York, born and raised, and if you Born and raised in New York, you got to be a Buffalo Bills fan, which he does love the Buffalo Bills, and they're still in the playoffs, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Greg used to be a professional trainer. Um, he played ice hockey as a kid. Um, he played not only football in high school, but collegiate football at University of Buffalo. Um, he also loved playing lacrosse and wrestled in high school. And he has five children from the span of age 23 to 12. And so, wow, cool. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta come see me if you need the licorice. But other than that, um, once again, I am, don't, you know, I am joking about that. Don't talk about me later, okay? <laughs> joking. But uh, I'd go, like to go ahead and give Mr. Fromm an, an opportunity to address the board as well. Brandon said I got to give a really long speech, so I prepared one. No, just kidding, Brandon. Brandon's got jokes, but I, I got jokes too. So um, I'll be able to compete with him on that end. But I just want to thank you. I'm very blessed to be back in the IE. Um, I've been here for seven days, but the people here are amazing, and it feels like I've known them for like months, years. So I'm very blessed to be here, and I'm just looking forward to continue to support the great things that we're doing for kids. And it was really great to see the presentation by Colton High, seeing all that great.
great things that are going there, going on there. And I just want to be part of all the great things here and bring support so we can continue to do those great things and provide more opportunities for our kids, because that's why we're here. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm blessed. Good to see you too. I'm really glad. And one more round of applause for Mr. Fromm, please. And that concludes my presentation for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dottie. We are now at item 4.1 on that <clears throat> public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been away too long, right? Um, and item 3.2, employee recognition. Director Cervantes, would you please come forward? Good evening, Board President Thoring Ojeda, Board members, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, and members of the community. The Human Resources Division is honored to congratulate and celebrate our November, December Employees of the Month. To be selected and nominated by your peers among our thousands of outstanding employees is a tremendous ac accomplishment. All of our nominees and our award winners have shown dedication, compassion, and motivation for their work. We offer our congratulations to our exemplary staff and thank them for their wonderful model they set for others. We would like to publicly recognize our winners tonight and invite them to join us here along with their family and their supporters when we call their name. Our classified employee recognition recipient is Andrew Diaz, grounds maintenance worker at Maintenance and Operations. And Andrew, if you have family members and supporters, they are welcome to come and join you. <laughs> so honoring him this evening is David Bell, director of MNO. So D David, I had shared with him that David, you're going to read, and he said, I forgot my glasses. So I'm going to be <laughs> reading the um, recognition for him. Thank you. Good evening, Board President Thoring Ojeda, members of board, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, and members of the public. It is my pleasure to introduce groundsman Andrew Diaz. Andrew continuously goes above and beyond for his colleagues, community, and students alike in suing his sites. PE areas and athletic fields are cleaned and well maintained. He not only maintains the fields, he also comes to support the students teams during the season. The fields at his site have tremendously improved due to his tireless work ethic. He is a true team player and is dedicated to performing his duties to the best of his abilities and problem solves when faced with unforeseen weather. Andrew displays a positive professional attitude and communicates well with PE teachers, athletic directors, and coaches. He is a great asset to the community of Colton Joint Unified. Andrew has worked for Colton for nine years. Andrew was inspired to come and work for Colton by his mother, who has worked for the district for over 25 years. Andrew was able to see the opportunities the district gave his family and joined Colton to, and joined Colton to be a part of it all. Previous to working for Colton, Andrew worked for the California Conservation Corps as a lead chainsaw operator. Andrew thoroughly enjoys his job and finds it very rewarding. In Andrew's personal time, he enjoys time with his wife and three beautiful daughters. His time with his family keeps him grounded. Thank you, Dr. Cervantes. I did want to add um, one note. Um, his nomination came not from our department, but from one of the athletic directors at the site. And so for our customer to point out our 
uh, exemplary employees really hits home for me. So I'm very appreciative for Andrew. One more round of applause for Andrew. Congratulations. Our next award recognition is Education Partner. Our Education Partner Employee Recognition recipients are Rachel Allenson, Director of Field Education. Allison, if you, Rachel, would you like to come up? Armando Berrigan, Associate Professor. Carolyn McAllister, Director of the School of Social Work. Lori Smith, Professor. Christina Hasia, Dean of the College of Behavioral Sciences. Christina's not here tonight. And Rafiq Mohammed, Provost. And he's also not here tonight. Um, honoring them this evening is Antonio Castro, Director of Behavioral and Mental Health. Thank you so much. Um, and good evening, uh, Board President Thorin Ojeda, uh, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, Executive Cabinet, and to all of those in, in attendance, both in person and virtually. Uh, I'm so excited and it is truly my honor tonight to present this Educational Partner Award to our California State University San Bernardino School of Social Work. The Colton Joint Unified School District's mental health program started six years ago now. Since then, California State San Bernardino or CSUSB Department of Social Work has been an integral partner of our district's behavioral and mental health program. Our partnership with CSUSB started with Ms. Rachel Allenson Director of Field Education for the School of Social Work. This collaboration has been critical in helping our mental health program meet our students' social and emotional needs. Over the past six years, well over 125 CSUSB bachelor and master's in social work students have trained and interned in our mental health program, which has translated into services provided to several hundreds of CJUSD students and families in need of mental health and case management services. In addition to the internship relationship, CSUSB has partnered with our mental health program by conducting evaluative research to assess and document the impact and progress of our mental health services across CJUSD. To solidify and improve and data collection efforts, the CSUSB School of Social Work made a significant financial contribution to our CJUSD mental health program approximately five years ago to develop an electronic documentation system known as Titanium. During the development process of this project, which lasted nearly five years, Ms. Rachel Allenson Dr. Armando, and Dr. Armando Barragan were instrumental in the conceptualization and realization of this project through countless hours of dreaming, planning, and consultation. In August of, this, uh, this, of 2022, the Titanium software was successfully implemented and tailored for our mental health program. This titanium program has significantly increased the efficiency of our, of our management system, and thus the quality of services that we provide to our students and our families for which we are eternally grateful. There are implications for this titanium program that will surely affect funding and research uh, projects in the near future. And so with that, it is my privilege tonight to honor and recognize all of those from the CSUSB School of Social Work for their contributions 
and support for the titanium project to our mental health program in general. Specifically, again, we honor Dr. Amanda Borgan, uh, Ms. Rachel Allenson, Director of Field Education, Dr. Carolyn McAllister, Director of School Social Work, Dr. Laurie Smith, Professor, Ms. Christina or Dr. Christina Hasija, Dean of College, Dean of the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences, and Provost Rafiq Mohammed. Thank you so much. You've helped our students so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if we can give one more round of applause to the Cal State University San Bernardino School of Social Work. Mrs. Cervantes. I would just like to, for the, on, in behalf of the board, thank the um, California State uh, University, San Bernardino, for the effect that they've had on our boys and girls. I think about the number of kids that we've been able to help because of this program. Um, it just, I don't know of any other school district that has done this, what we've done, and it's because of the support we've, getting, we've gotten from them. And I truly help, um, I know all of us feel that way about our students, uh, especially now after COVID and what the experiences that kids have had to go through. Um, we've just been able to provide services that we haven't been able to in the, in the past. And we're all grateful that we were able to have so much success in our program with our kids. Thank you to you for all your help with that and developing the program with them. Um. <laughs> At this time, I would like to share that we will recognize our cer Certificate Employee Recognition recipient, Mr. Marcos Ruiz, Grand Terrace High School ASB Director at our February 16th board meeting, where his family will be able to join him to help him celebrate his recognition. Um, lastly, we would like to offer our heartfelt congratulations to all of tonight's winners, and we encourage our Colton Joint Unified staff to continue to acknowledge and nominate more of our outstanding employees. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you. <clears throat> Now we're at public comment. <clears throat> Each speaker will be invited to the podium and should begin by stating his or her name and residing city. Board bylaw 9323 states that individual speakers shall be allowed three minutes to address the board on each agenda or non-agenda item. The board shall limit the total time for public input on each item to 15 minutes with board consent the president may increase or decrease the time allowed for public presentation, depending on the topic and the number of persons wishing to be heard. The president may take a poll of speakers for or against a particular issue and may ask that additional persons speak only if they have something new to add. At this time, I call to the podium Lisa Villa, please. Hello, I'm Lisa Villa and I'm from Colton. Good evening, I'd like to thank you for making sure the security department is more up to par with being CPR first aid certified. After I notified you, all of the, that many of us were not certified, the very next day we received an email about CPR first aid training. This shows me the power that our board members have, that you have. Many people within the security department showed up for the first day training, which should tell you that we are willing to learn and grow as employees. 
The power that the board members have is rarely used for the betterment of my community, staff, or student safety, which is not acceptable. On another note, as you well know, I am missing out on my son Colton's epic senior year. Even though you have the power to change that, I have begged you for many years to transfer me back to the site that I applied to be at. But instead, you have continuously allowed your security managers to abuse their power and leave just a few of us at the sites that we did not apply to work at. On top of, of having me at a site I did not apply to be at, I am singled out and harassed all the time for things themselves they did alongside me when they weren't managers. I feel unsupported. I also was not supported as I led the Cold High Football Boosters as president. Even though I was hindered by my supervisors, I still made it happen for our football players. It was 10 times harder because I did not have their support. I am serving the students of this district. Why wouldn't I not be supported? Does that make any sense? The fact that I did not get to be with my, that I do not get to be with my son during his senior year, while many other employees get to be with their children, is unforgivable. And I will never forget that you did not make it happen for me. I am asking you once again to look into this security department and the unfairness that is coming out of the seams. Please allow our department to be ran by seniority. Keep it fair. I am also asking that the security managers lead by example and be transferred immediately because it is them that should know all the areas of our district first and foremost. The security managers should actually be sent to take leadership classes, which I highly doubt they have it is clear it is clear because of the leadership qualities they have that they have not taken any leadership classes that's why the security department is divided broken and ununited use your power to help our students and staff that's why we voted for your you to your positions thank you very much we are now <clears throat> on the uh, action session Items 5.1 through 5.36. Is there anyone who'd like an item to be considered separately? Uh, is, do I have an motion to approve action items 5.1 through 5.38? So move. Oh. Mr. Fuentes, a second. Do you have a second? Okay. <clears throat> I have a motion by Board Member Fuentes and seconded by Board Member Flores to approve action items 5.1 through 5.36. <clears throat> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So on a motion by board member Fuentes and board member F Flores carried on a 6-0 vote, the board approved actions 5.1 through 5.36. <clears throat> We're now at 6.0 6 administrative reports. For administrative report 6.1 to 6.2, are there any questions or comments from the board members? Approved disbursements and independent auditors annual financial report. Item 6.2, there's no update. Oh, I bought a 6.3 facilities update. No. 6.4 ACE update. This is brought to you, not here. Oh, okay. Good evening, Board President Thoring Ojeda, Board Members, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, and members of the audience. Um, if I had known sooner that Christina Parachi could not be here tonight, I would have looked for the services of Brandon because he's an epic person to introduce, stellar job. But um, my name is Pamela Townsend. Most of you know me. I've been in the district for 30 years, and I have a personal relationship with most of you. Um, I am looking forward to being the new ACE Vice President. 
Um, I'm looking forward to working collaboratively and to have, we all have the same goal for students to have an amazing education and for teachers to be treated in the way when we're happy, kind of my house, if mama's happy, everybody's happy. So if the teachers are happy, the students are happy. And um, that's my goal to be less confrontational and more collaborative. So thank you for this opportunity to serve the students of Colton. Thank you. Is there a CSCA update? <clears throat> Good evening, Board President Thoring Ojeda, Board Members, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, and members of the audience in person and virtual. My name is Anthony Guadarrama. I'm the CDCA Chapter President, Colton 244. And tonight I've brought a couple of my e-board members to introduce themselves. Hello, Darlene Sanchez, um, 29 years in the district. I'm the Chief Union Job Steward. I'm Campus Security at Grand Terrace High School. Hello, good evening. My name is Diane Miller. I'm our, I've been here for 15 years. I'm our CSEA secretary and receptionist over at Colton Middle. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is David Espinosa. I work with the IT department. I am currently the Sergeant at Arms for uh, CSEA Chapter 244 eBoard. I've been with the district. This is uh, year 33 now. Um, I'm a product of Colton Joint Unified School District School System. So it's good to be here. Thank you. And we actually have four members that were not able to make it tonight. Louis Pacheco, our first vice president, works with the MO department. He's been with the district for 14 years. Nicole Figueroa, our second vice president, is security at Bloomington High School. She's been with the district for 29 years. Our treasurer, Renny Espinoza Garza, who's with Nutrition Services Department, has been with the district for 33 years. And our public relations office, public public relations officer Laura Henderson, is with the Nutrition Services Department. And has been with the district for 16 years. Now, the reason I wanted to introduce you to my team is to emphasize the fact that we have a lot of experience and knowledge that we have to offer to the district. Um, one of our goals as CSEA is to work with the district to improve the overall working conditions of its members. A happy employee is more likely to be a productive employee. Are we going to make everyone happy? Well, you know, I highly doubt it, but. Our kids, our kids deserve the best, and again, our goal is to make sure our employees are taken care of so they can provide the outstanding support that our students and fellow staff members deserve. My team and I understand and respect the chain of command. As most of you know, we don't come to you, the board, often with issues, and we really shouldn't have to. I think the biggest reason we don't feel the need to is the fact that we do have a great, we do a great job of working with the district to resolve those issues at the lowest possible level. Sometimes, however, there will be issues that we will not agree on or have not received a satisfactory response from the district. It is then that we will bring those matters to your attention like we have in the past couple months. Unfortunately, recently an executive cabinet member to told my second vice president and chief union steward that they would appreciate us not going to the board members. Again, we understand and respect the chain of command, but if it gets to your level, that means something has not been dealt with properly and it is something that is greatly affecting our members. Which leads me into my negotiations update. The majority of my negotiations team consists of most of the executive board members that you were introduced to tonight. The same ones with all that experience and knowledge. Now, when we bring things to the table, we don't just throw darts at our collective bargaining agreement and go, aha, that's what we're going to work on. You know, when we present language changes to our collective bargaining articles, those changes are being presented to provide solutions to issues that have not been that have not been necessarily been brought to your attention, but we deal with on a consistent basis. One of our biggest goals this year is to enhance our professional growth program. Many, many years back, class classified employees received an ongoing percentage salary increase for college units earned. Currently, members receive one-time stipends for every 20 units earned up to 80 units. One-time stipends are okay, but they only make a teeny tiny dent in the cost of college tuition, especially after taxes. We would like to go back to the old style where members were compensated on an ongoing basis for the skills that they have developed, which they will in turn bring back to and benefit the district. As one of CGUSD's pillars of lifelong learners, I believe that investing, investing in building the capacity of our employees will only have positive results. Another area we're trying to improve upon is unit member initiated transfers. Now imagine you've been in a position for five, 10, 15, 20 years, and you wanna to transfer to an opening within the district for whatever reason, whether it's closer to home, 
it's a principal you want to work with or whatever reason it may be. Currently, those members have to apply and interview. Now, we understand why they have to apply because obviously, you know, they have to show interest. But the, for them to have to interviews, you know, we don't see the reason why they have to interview. If they're doing the job, they've been doing the job, they don't have any disciplinary issues, why, why shouldn't they be able to transfer anywhere within the district? And we've been told that it's a cultural fit thing and principals and directors should be able to make the choice. But the district has contradicted itself a few times this past year. Midway through 2022, there were three security guards that were involuntarily transferred and nobody was interviewed. Towards the end of the year, there were five custodians that were involuntarily transferred again. No interviews were held. So they're trying to say, you know, it's a cultural fit thing, it's this, but when it's involuntary, there's no interviews. But when there's a hardworking person that wants to transfer somewhere for whatever reason, they have to apply and interview. So it's kind of, again, a little contradictory. Next. When it comes to compensation, we are constantly told that you, the board, are responsible for providing parameters within which, which the district can negotiate. Before you provide those, provide those parameters, I would respectfully request that you look back the past two or three years. Is my computer keeping me? Look back, uh, look back the past two or three years at the salary increases that many of our management members, assistant superintendents, directors, and other management members have received on top of the negotiated salary increases. When we come to the table next week with the proposal, we're only looking for what is fair and equitable. We're also still awaiting relevant financial information that was requested by my first vice president and lead negotiator back on November 10th, 2022. To this day, we still have not received any type of response. Lastly, and this is not really part of negotiations, but it is something I want to bring to your attention. There are two, soon to be three, surrounding school districts that have increased all of their instructional assistance from part-time to full-time eight-hour employees. Our district spends a lot of money on contracting out those services because I know how hard it is to fill those positions, but it's only going to get worse unless we, we take a look at making some changes. Again, just wanted to throw out there, it's, it's going to be a lot more difficult in the future moving forward. So we got going on three districts that are moving to full-time instructional aides. Um, other than that, it's great to see everyone. I know it's a couple weeks in, but happy new year. And, uh, I look forward to another successful year for CGOSD. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 6.6 .6, Mac update. Good evening again, everyone. Um, our wonderful principals, Tiffany Hampton and Yvette Roman, cannot make it because they're having fun at a conference currently, and they tricked me into doing this for them. So uh, we do have our presentation here. Next slide. Membership for MAC, welcome to all new management employees. Um, Assistant Superintendent from, we've got a slide just for you coming up that we'd like to welcome you into CJUSD at a great time with the governor's budget. So we've got that coming your way real soon, sir. Um, dues for new members for the remainder of the year are prorated $30, so please sign up. 42 current members. Next slide. Upcoming events for Mac, come join us at our Mount Rubidoux hike at 8.30 a.m. on February 11th. You can bring your family and friends. And you can go up and down as many times as you like. Uh, we also encourage you um, to participate in the resolution walk for the new year, Cold Middle School, January 25th at 5 p.m. Next slide, please. Our equity task force. We definitely need representation in our equity task force. You can read the uh, bullet points there, but I'm gonna go ahead and read some of the commitment because I think that's important that you understand what it entails. And so the task force activities will include coming to a common definition of equity, uh, looking at our board policy that already exists, determining what we do now, what needs to be improved, and providing actionable solutions, thinking about how to keep it all going once improvement has been established, our improvement cycle, providing professional learning opportunities for the entire CJUSD community to move the work. Uh, what would be your commitment? Attend the monthly meetings, come to meetings with an open mind to hear all voices and ideas. We will learn together. Think about solutions based on current research as well as district data. Respect the process, not all change is immediate. And lastly, celebrate all wins, great and small. So that would be your commitment for the Equity Task Force. Um, and if you have any questions, you can contact our amazing principal, uh, Ms. Tiffany Hampton. Legislative updates, this is the best part of the night right here. Um, so there you go, Assistant Superintendent from uh, the governor's budget, 22.5 billion gap in spending, it's not that much. 
All right, so um, Bill 1810, um, this law authorizes school nurses and trained non-medical employee volunteers to administer emergency anti-seizure medications. Um, SB 532, uh, the purpose of this is improving educational outcomes for highly mobile students. Um, and this one actually resonates really well with me being a former uh, military child and moved around very frequently. Um, so this assists students similar to those military um, children in addition to our foster care homeless uh, migrant students as well uh, for that transition, um, potentially to fifth year to ensure graduation as well as some of the requirements that change. Uh, AB 1703 establishes the California Indian Education Act uh, and encourage school districts such as ours, county offices of education, and charter schools to form California Indian Education Task Forces within California tribes um, to their regions or tribes historically located in the region. The bill would encourage task force participants to discuss issues of mutual concern. As you can see there, I just lost my place because I'm reading from there. Let me get back here. The bill would authorize California Indian Education Task Force to submit circular materials to the county office, curricular materials to the County Office of Education or Consortium of County Offices of Education that contracted to develop the model curricula related to Native American studies. And that is it for Mac. Again, Happy New Year, everyone. Great to see you all. And second semester is going to be tons of fun. Thank you. Thank you very much, Principal Abbott. At this time, we how about ROP update? No update? Okay. We will move into item 7.0, superintendent's communique. Good evening, Board President Joanne uh, Ojeda, board members and members of the audience virtually. I'm actually looking for my my notes here, but if we can start with, uh, let me just pull it up, apologies. I was really listening to John. I mean, he was he was great legislation and all that, so apologize for that. Uh, anyhow, so uh, anyway, it's great to be here this evening, uh, and I do wanted to highlight something on this slide, the introduction slide here is uh, we've added our motto here, which is uh, keeping students first, achievement, equity, and wellness. And this came out again of our work that we've done with our design plan, our vision. And so we wanted to put it uh, in, in something short and sweet that really tells the, the story. So I wanted to first highlight that. Uh, so next slide, please. All right, so uh, last week, I think many of you are aware, uh, Human Resources hosted the first 2022-23 uh, Colton Joy Unified Leadership Development Seminar, and it was a huge success. I was able to attend and, and listen a little bit, introduce and welcome folks, and there's uh, Mr. Dade there uh, talking to the folks who are participating. Uh, so the Leadership Development Seminar, to give you an idea of what this is, is designed for aspiring leaders uh, who are interested in furthering their leadership abilities. Uh, and uh, this is a long year seminar, so uh, which will, there's gonna be a curriculum that will introduce uh, key leadership strands and will focus on characteristics of great leaders. Uh, the sem seminar began on January 11th, uh, 2023, this year, uh, and it will meet five times uh, throughout the year uh, up to May of this year. There will be two full day meetings and then three after school meetings. Uh, the curriculum again is blended in theory and in practice. There has to be application there as well pr as provide an opportunity for uh, professional readings and discussions. And the instructors that I call with Mr. Dade are just some of the uh, just high level, some of the most experienced instructors you will find around with Dr. Lynn, Dr. Gray Polko, uh, who are leading some of those discussions. Uh, the seminar uh, will conclude, conclude excuse me, with a trip to Gettysburg in June. Participants will explore a variety of leadership strands there, including values, personal mastery, uh, mastery, excuse me, building teams and building people, change leadership, and decision-making. 
And we know as leaders, decision making is right up there. So each session will devote time to identify uh, personal leadership styles and strengths of the participants. And uh, it's one of the, uh, the reason why I'm really excited about this is this is one of the visions for the board. Uh, and they've been asking me and asking cabinet, I mean, as their superintendent, to start something like that, that not only builds capacity uh, for certificated, but also for classified. So we have classified certificated folks that are part of this leadership academy. So I want to thank uh, Mr. Dade for his leadership and his team for putting this together. Uh, again, it's about building internal capacity. Uh, that way we can uh, promote uh, within and give those folks an opportunity to uh, move up in those uh, uh, those management positions or whatever level they'd like to get to. So again, uh, it's a great academy. It started off and we're looking forward to uh, to uh, what's next after this. So next slide, please. All right. So I know that this is the elementary reading challenge and uh, it's really uh, as educators and a former elementary principal, whether you're elementary or non-middle or, or high school, uh, we know how important reading is. Uh, and if we can get our third graders, uh, our, by the time our kids get to third grade that they're reading at a grade level, that's a huge accomplishment. And I know it's a near and dear to, uh, to our board here, uh, especially reading. So Ed Services, Educational Services, has begun the elementary reading challenge for grades K through six. Students will take a, a pretest on our accelerator reader program, and then uh, we'll have a goal set to begin the challenge. And so the goal for students to read when they finish independent work in class, or the goal is rather, is for students to read uh, when they finish independent work in their classes and to read at home. Students earn points for the reading, and at the end of the quarter, well, the district will recognize those students who meet their goal, the top scoring students from each school, and the top classes and schools where the highest percentage of students meet their goals. So Educational uh, Services Division will offer professional development to teachers who need it to ensure that they can use the program and we're able to work with their students. So I love that. Again, it aligns with our vision on professional learning. We're excited to add this to our secondary uh, challenge to continue to move forward uh, toward meeting our literacy goals. And this came out of our literacy task force, uh, again, from our design plan. So setting that vision of reading literacy is one of the priorities in this district and of this board, as you can tell. So thank you to Dr. Peterson, uh, Dr. Hyder, and uh, Ed Services for uh, putting this together. Uh, so uh, please, uh, site principal, site leaders, encourage this. Uh, this is something that I think is will be huge for our students because uh, uh, reading is important. So, uh, all right, last slide for tonight on on my communique. Uh, so on the hashtag CGC Cares, uh, you know, this Saturday, uh, I want to invite everybody. Uh, so this Saturday, January 21st, the district will be hosting its annual district science fair, the 35th annual district science fair. Uh, and the science fair will be held at Colton High School beginning at 8 to 12. I'll tell you, and a lot of people don't know this, but actually taught science. And so uh, middle school science. So I love the science fair. I love the science projects. And I'd always challenge my students and work with them. So uh, this is, uh, I'm very excited about this. So I look forward to being there Saturday at Colton High School. Uh, so the STEAM Expo uh, will be happening with activities. That will begin at 8.30. And so we're excited to see all the entries and the hard work from our awesome students. The Science Fair Awards Ceremony will be held next week. Uh, so put that on your calendars on Tuesday, January 24th. Also at Colton High uh, from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. So the board, and we have a lot of passionate uh, uh, science people here on the board too uh, that uh, support this event and love this event. And so the board and, and myself are looking forward to supporting all the students and seeing those awesome science fair projects. Uh, and it's just incredible what some of these projects have done. So if you never got an opportunity to go there, please go. You will be blown away, away, honestly, by what some of our students do. It's unbelievable, yeah. So uh, obviously very excited about that. 
So with that, uh, that's my communicate tonight, and I will turn it back over to our board president. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Miranda. Our next, um, I'll start board member comments with Mr. Ibarra. Thank you, Joanne. Um, one of the things I just want to make mention is the fact that uh, our district's ability to uh, work together with other outside uh, agencies and, and, and districts, uh, such as Cal State San Bernardino, San Bernardino Valley College, uh, CRIROP, um, only uh, provides us even uh, and our students with more opportunities. And I just wanted to commend those individuals who help make those programs go within our district. I think it's really important in today's world where we realize and recognize that any district can't do everything by themselves. We do a lot, but in order to serve our students and provide them with more opportunities, we need to reach out. We need to reach out to all the other agencies that provide career educational opportunities, academic educational opportunities. And uh, for those here that allow and work with these individuals, like Cal State San Bernardino, who was here today, I just wanna commend you guys because I know that that's something that uh, will serve and has continued to serve our students for many, many years. Um, and we'll continue to do that. So thank you for that. Just wanted to mention, and I support, you know, any efforts that we can from our district to increase those opportunities for our students. So, you know, uh, uh, recognizing them today yeah, it was something that I, I truly believe in looking at those individuals that they really, truly appreciated it. And I think that as we identify individuals and other people that partner with us, we need to recognize them. We need to let them know how much we as a district appreciate everything they do and the services they provide for our students. So I just wanna say thank you for that. Um, also, I just wanna say thank you to Anthony for uh, what he mentioned today. I think it's important for us as a board to really listen to, the, first of all, the, his efforts to recognize and bring some of his uh, cabinet with him today, I'll call it the cabinet, uh, and, and to share the years of experience that they have within our district is very important. I really truly believe, and I think we had a conversation earlier as a board, recognizing the experiences of people within our district and how valuable those experiences can be. And not only because they provide it on a daily basis, but what they could offer to the incoming individuals who are coming in to work with us, but also what they know. That's the key element, how they can help this district grow and become stronger and better. So I just wanna thank you for bringing these things to our attention. Um, I always say that there's a fallacy out there that everybody thinks that the Board of Education knows everything that's going on within the district, and that's not possible. And we rely on the information that's brought to us so that we can see what's going on and what are some of the needs that need to happen within our uh, district and for our students and for our employees. And uh, I think that that's uh, something that we really need to listen to and make sure that we have those meaningful conversations as we move forward and uh, so forth. So I just wanna say thank you for bringing those things to our attention. Um, earlier today, uh, and I'll just say this really, uh, I won't say too much. Uh, we had a really, the board, I'm talking about the board, we had a really meaningful conversation and I truly appreciate, appreciate that. The information that we share amongst each other as far as the direction we'd like to see this district go in, is it's really important. And um, 
it's also uh, great to note that there's seven of us. We have seven different opinions, but that can be good too, because as we share, uh, we learn from each other. And as we, as we share our individual experiences, we can grow from that. So we need to continue working toward our communication and working together and sharing the information that we feel that's going to be important to move this district forward and have that insight that we have to have in order for this district to thrive and continue moving in the direction that not only do the students need, the community, our staff, but you know uh, that we all need to be able to be headed in the same direction together. I think that's really important. Um, with all that being said, I just want to say that you know it's incredible how we're starting the second half of the school year. And if you've been in education as long as I have, in one form or another, you know that this is kind of a slide. Graduation is might as well turn the calendar to May because it's, it goes really quickly from this point on. You know, we get all these Martin Luther King days, President days, we get spring break and all that adds to. So um, first of all, I just wanna wish everybody a, a great second half of the school year. Let's get these things done. Um, second, I just wanna encourage communication among all of us so that we can listen to each other and continue to communicate in a positive, productive way. And then third, I just want to wish everybody a happy new year and look forward to working with each and every one of you in some capacity in the, as the year grows. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ibarra. Next, uh, Board Member Fuentes. Thank you, Board President. Well, welcome back, everybody. I hope everyone had a great New Year's and a great Christmas. I did. Uh, I had time to be with some family and stuff. And, uh, and of course, you know, I had the opportunity to celebrate with a lot of kids this year. I had the opportunity to head out with Colton PD to uh, Arrowhead and uh, give away some toys. And you guys know that every year I dress up as Santa Claus and go out and uh, work with our local police department. And we go to homes and we make kids smile. We make kids have, give them that opportunity to at least have something for Christmas. And it makes a difference. It makes a difference when you have that child taking that gift and they're looking at it and they're smiling and they're loving it, especially if St. Nick gives it to them. So I had that opportunity and uh, I'm blessed to be able to do that. And I will never get tired of doing it. I was at the preschool and I want to share this real quick. And so one of this young young lady, I maybe three years old, four years old, comes up to Santa Claus and says, Santa, do you shower every day? And Santa Claus says, yes, because you smell really good. <laughs> so, uh, you know, our three and four year old kids from the preschools, they are intelligent. They're waiting to take that information. And I commend the teachers. I commend the leadership there for what they do every day. Uh, everyone on that campus, from the gentleman that picks up the trash, that cuts the lawn and everything and has that communication with their kids, I commend them for that because it makes a difference in our community. It makes a difference in our schools when uh, the gentleman that picks up the trash or our custodian does this or our safety officer does that, it makes a great difference when there's that communication amongst the students. Anthony, thank you for bringing those uh, concerns and thank you for bringing your leadership out here because a lot of times we need to know we need to know th certain things too and you know we'll get on it and uh, I greatly appreciate all our teachers you know for what they do our principals our assistant principals I can't express myself more to every single person that's on staff at, the, at Colton Joint Unified and once again thank you to each and every one of you I hope you had a great Christmas a happy new year also wanted to share I was at the active shooter, uh, active shooter uh, training, and this I think was my third one that I came to. And every time it's different because there's always new things that are being updated, uh, new things that come to the table, new new procedures, new things. So I encourage uh, when those dates come back up again, I encourage each and every one of you if you haven't taken the test, I've taken the test, taken the training training, 
uh, to take it. It is important that everybody is aware of the training. I think Dr. Ortiz and his, and you know his team and stuff. And I want to thank uh, Sean Campa, our safety officer, who does the training. He does a phenomenal job. A phenomenal job. I know it's not easy sometimes taking trainings like this, but it's a reality that we live in. It's a reality we live in. We don't know. It could happen at school, like it could happen when you're having dinner with your family at Olive Garden. You know, it could be at the movie theater. You know, it could be you're put you're pumping gas at a local gas station. Some guy goes crazy. You know, you never know. You never know when things are going to happen, but it's always good to know what to do. That's the key, what to do. Because if we can save one life, we can save many lives. And that's what it is. It's a life and death situation, reality. So I want to commend our district. I want to commend our leadership uh, for doing that, for bringing those active shooter trainings, you know, the fire drills, the earthquake drills, the disaster drills that we have, you know, in our district. Thank you, John Sack for his leadership also, for taking, you know, charge of the safety, safety officers. You know, all the safety officers out there, I want to thank you for always keeping our schools safe, keeping those eye, that eye out, you know, that one eye, you know, keeping an eye on things. Because with, without our safety officers, you know, sometimes we, get, we have to feel insured, like we're safe on campus, and that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that our students feel safe, our staff feel safe, when they go to school. We wanna ensure our parents that their students are safe because that is our goal. We want them to learn, which is the key. We want them to be educated, but we also want them to feel comfortable. And that's what we do here at CJUSD. We make sure that our students get a quality education, that they're safe, and that everyone, everyone is kept on tap on everything. So once again, thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of the, uh, of the school year. Like Mr. Ibarra said, Frank said, graduations are coming. Can't wait for those. You know, it's going to be fun this year. Uh, we're going to have a, lots of fun with the graduations this year. I know they're going to happen on the actual school campuses. So that's going to be a little different thing. But, you know, I had my graduation when I graduated from La Puente High School back in the day on my campus. And I won't tell you when I graduated because, man, it was a long time. So have a great day. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you, Board Member Fuentes. Board Member Sandoval. No comment. Thank you. Board Member Bertha Flores. Okay. Thank you, Board President. Um, yeah, first of all, I want to say thank you to Dr. Peterson and Dr. Heider. Uh, and their department for putting together the reading challenge. Um, if I don't know if everybody knows, but it, this is using accelerated reader, correct? Um, where they have the um, leveled uh, level. Every book the child le reads is leveled, and um, and they are able to go to the libraries and pick out uh, various books. Um, there's a lot of pluses to this to this program and to this reading challenge, and we're going to see very, very good results. They're going to be, you're going to see improved vocabulary. You're going to see reading fluency increase. You're going to see their comprehension improve. There's a lot of pluses. Um, there's, uh, I'm excited to see books flying off the shelves into the hands of kids, because that's what we want to see. We want the kids, the books, not in the shelves, we want them in the hands of kids. Um, and also part of this is let's not uh, and I know t teachers, principals, librarians know this, but ju uh, just remember the joy of reading. We have to keep that, uh, especially in kindergartners, third graders, sixth graders. You know, if a child um, likes um, big machines uh, and they have a level reader where it has just a few words that he or she can read, um, and that student sees another book, you know, like Mike Mulligan and the Steam Shovel, which is a little higher level. Um, I know I know teachers will do this too. It's let the, that child get that book. Even though they not they may not be passing that accelerated reader, that joy of that child reading a book that they love, 
that means a lot. So we're, I'm really, really excited about what uh, what this program is going to uh, going to. It's going to have very, very positive results. You know, if they love dinosaurs, you know, they can read accelerated reader books about dinosaurs. But if they want to read a dinosaur that a fifth grade, you know, they look at they look at the pictures and they it's a fifth grade book. Let them, you know, even if you have to, instead of two books. Give them three books instead of three books. Giving four books, you know, uh, it's very important. So I'm really, really. When does it end? It's at the end of the year, Dr. Heider, I believe. Every quarter. Okay. So I would love to see some um, results on that, and and I know we're gonna. It's gonna show up on our test scores, but more importantly, the kids are gonna love reading. That's the most important thing. Um, uh, to our unions that were pres that are present here tonight, to Pam and to Anthony and their staff that are here, um, I just want to say thank you, thank you for your dedication, thank you for your your collaboration uh, spirit, uh, for 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 give, keeping us informed, and also um, you know just for your just overall dedication to our kids. Now, both of you, when you were up here, you mentioned two things. You said we're here for the kids. We want happy kids. That's one thing. The other thing you said you know we want to feel appreciated we want to be happy happy teachers are happy kids i totally agree with both statements so just know that we really really appreciate every classified staff member and what you bring to the table whatever you you do in the district uh teachers you know my heart is with you i once a teacher i, I always a teacher so um i i um i just want my hats off to you the last thing I want to say is um, Principal Mitch Hovey is here. Thank you. <clears throat> Board Member Harrell. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I know you all had a better thing, uh, Hall Halloween. Uh, I know you all had a better uh, winter break than I did because I was sick the whole three weeks. So um, I'm, I'm glad we are back and ready for the second part of the school year. And as uh, my colleagues have all said, the second half just seems to speed by. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, my 28th year judging science fair. Um, in fact, I've already started with elementary, and um, my only hope is that the uh, with the elementary that we don't need an interview. So I've been working on those already, and viewing some of the projects online uh, on Z Fair. Uh, when you look at the pictures, they're blurry. So if we can kind of look at that. So when the rest of the judges jump in, we don't have that problem, but I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to uh, going on uh, uh, on Saturday. Um, I want to congratulate um, our virtual enterprise over at Bloomington High School. Um, our both of our teams, Social Shield and SNAP Next Wednesday, we'll leave for up north. They are going to the state. So we're very proud of them, and they're very excited that both teams this year have are going. Um, I also want to congratulate a student at Bloomington High School who was part of the Rose Parade Honor Band. A lot of great things come out of our, um, our band program over at Bloomington. And I want to say that um, I asked Ms. Medina for a copy of our school facilities policy. And the second um, statement on this policy says, 
all school related activities shall be given priority in the use of facilities and grounds under the Civic Center Act. Thereafter, they shall, the use shall be on a first come, first serve basis. Well, the reason I read that line is that our band program at Bloomington High School is having major issues. Uh, we had uh, the uh, facilities, meaning the football field, was rented out to an adult men's soccer team. And they literally were um, pushing the band members. They broke an instrument and an iPad. The men, because it was an adult men group, they were uh, making derogatory and sexual comments to the female band players. And they were there on, a, on the field before uh, just uh, pushing the uh, band away. Now we are in, uh, we're headed into uh, the next season of band. There is winter guard, there's winter drumline and concert percussion. These three programs need to be done or practice in the environment that they uh, will perform in when they go uh, to perform and for uh, which in this case would be the, uh, audit not the auditorium, I'm sorry, the um, gym. The Bloomington Community Basketball Association, February 18th, begins practicing in the Bloomington High School gym. And the Winter Guard, the Winter Drumline, and Concert Percussion have told, been told that the district said that, that the Bloomington Community Basketball Association had first were, were told that the, they were told by the principal that this basketball team had they were told that the district told them that they had to give them the gym so our students could come on a saturday well on saturday the basketball is there also and they were told well you can come from 6 a.m to 9 a.m. And then when they leave, you can come back and use it. Again, it says all school related activities shall be given priority. Our students are not being given priority. I don't know where the uh, breakdown is, um, but I know that they were told this by the principal and assistant principal that it couldn't be changed because the district told them. So I um, was very discouraged to hear this. And I told our band director that I would look into it for him. Because I don't, I know that this board would not agree to having an outside group before our own students work on it. Um, I've spoken to uh, many staff members. I've gotten uh, a lot of emails. I've gotten phone calls. And let's face it, um, they know that Pat Haro is the board member who speaks up at board meetings and is not afraid to say what she feels. So here goes. Some things are happening to some of our staff that is not right. And two of the comments that were made to me were that this business just seems to be getting colder instead 
of more caring. Even though our hashtag is CJUSD cares. Please remind HR to keep the human and human resources. Instead of reading a quote like I normally do, I want to end on something happy. I want to read a note that was given to one of our staff members because we're all in this school district because we love kids, because we want to do the right thing for our students. And this is something good. To this teacher, she wrote, thank you for all you do for me. You have helped me come a long way. Your encouragement and encourage, encouragement in my studies, you encourage me in my studies and life. You are a special person and my friend. I appreciate you more than you know. So not every teacher gets that message or not every custodian or not everyone, but you do make a difference in the lives of every student that you touch. We've talked about it before, from the bus driver who greets them in the morning to when they go home. We all make a difference, so don't forget that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Harrell. Uh, Mr. Ibarra? Thank you, Joanne. It's always been our practice ever since I've been here that our students, our students, activities get priority in all our facilities. Obviously, uh, what I'm hearing is not acceptable. We can't have that. I understand uh, if any if anybody here has ever participated in band, sports, how important it is to practice in your environment that you need to, uh, to uh, compete in. With that being said, I think that uh, there's something not being done and where these individual soccer teams or whoever comes in uh, registers or applies for facility usage. There needs to be a way that whoever's giving them the, the approval can see First and foremost, is there a need for our students? Because there's no way, well, let me put it this way. I don't think if the state of California, the education department comes down here, we could justify moving our students out of a facility uh, for a community program. Am I wrong with that? I don't think that we would have a leg to stand on under those cases. So we need to really make sure that our students get priority. That's what this policy is about. We have to have that priority. And somebody needs to be watching that and being in charge of that. Whoever that individual is, not going to name names, but there's someone allowing these. And for a principal to say that a men's soccer team takes priority over our award-winning bands when they need those facilities, it, you know, we can't have that. And it shouldn't happen. You know, I know that because I've seen it before where people do uh, these programs favors. They know these people. But still, that should not be acceptable either. So there's something that we need to do at this point, and I'm going to ask to see if the board will give us a, give a consensus to agree and to have our superintendent look into that so that those type of incidents do not occur again. Because uh, 
number one, we built all these facilities. I've been here with all the remodels going all the way back to 97. They were built for our students, first and foremost not for outside community groups and there should never they should our our instructors if we want to keep our instructors our band leaders here we need to to work with them we need to give them the access to these facilities so that they can do their jobs so i think you know what i'm getting at you know and i think you agree so uh once again, you know, as a board, we bring this concern to you as a superintendent, then, uh, you know, up to you to see how you're going to resolve this and report back to the board. I'm asking for a report, you know, on, you know, and, and I support Pat Harrell with her concern here. And I think that if we all, uh, I like to ask for a consensus, uh, president. Uh, we have consensus. Or, yes. 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 So, and not only for Bloomington, but for Cone High School and Grand Terrace and any other facilities that we have. Absolutely. I appreciate that bring, uh, bringing it up at the board meeting. Uh, and I know that our students first always use the facilities first or should be. So we'll be following up for sure. Uh, we'll be uh, definitely talking to Ms. Roman and finding out what's going on at Bloomington High School. And on top of that, looking at our other high schools to ensure that we uh, are implementing the board policy as stated, uh, because that, that there's no question that our students uh, use of the facility is number one and first. We've always committed to that. There's absolutely, uh, would, that would not be something that would come from, uh, from executive cabinet or the superintendent's office that we would allow another group to take president over any group uh period and uh i also like to make i will another, follow up with that another request mr superintendent is the fact that if there's a soccer team out there using vulgar remarks pushing our and breaking they should never ever be allowed to use any of our facilities at cone joint unified school district absolutely 100 thousand percent agree so we need to find out who they were and 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 make sure that they do not get access at all absolutely we're already on that and looking into the situation joanne can i say one more comment that i forgot yes it's a good thing it's also about the band and i and had it right at the top and i forgot because i got so passionate about the other thing um mr ibarra will remember when the lord mayor came out in 2019 and um officially invited the Bloomington High School Band to perform in the largest New Year's Day parade in the in the world. Um, they have been invited back this year, uh, the 2024-2025 New Year's Day parade, the largest New Year's Day parade will be held in Rome, Italy this year. And Bloomington High School has been invited and they will also be um, asking members of the Colton High School Band and Grand Terrace Band uh, to accompany them with, uh, again. So be looking out for, they'll be fundraising. So, <laughs> so I just wanted to let you all know because I remember what a great, great event that was that they got to yeah. do that. Now that was really cool because uh, the individual that Pat is mentioning, Lord Stanley, is the great, great grandson of Winston Churchill. And he actually came in and was there with us at Bloomington High School. So, and I still have the pictures and I keep them <laughs> in the pen, yes. If, if there's a way, I heard that uh, an instrument was broken or something during that soccer. If there's a way to find out what it was and find out if that team can pay for that, because that is our students that use that instrument. And if they broke it, you know, as you break it, you pay for it. Well, could be conducting an investigation. Please. Thank you. I appreciate that. My comments tonight. First of all, I'm very surprised to hear what I just heard. Um, many, many years ago when I was employed in another school district, I had, it was my responsibility to approve or not approve of these uh, use of facilities. And I know that in our policy and procedures, we had on the contract people um, 
used to rent or however they with their facilities there's comments on there to address that and i thought we had that in ours it may just be a, a training issue with the person who does approve those but um and there's also it was it, there's an easy way to make a fix there so i i know that won't be yeah it i think it was an oversight maybe in training of the person i don't know anyway i'm sorry to hear that but i know that we'll get that rectified um <clears throat> well here we are january happy new year to everyone here <laughs> i'm welcome back it seems like it's been forever since we've had a school board meeting uh, i'm hoping that everyone had some rest over vacation because even though it seems like we may slide into the high school to graduations there's a whole lot of work that's going to happen between now and then on the part of students and all of our staff um, <clears throat> but i am glad that we are all back and everyone is um, off to a, a big a fresh beginning i am excited for the reading challenge as well i as a reading teacher when i was teaching um, and and mostly primary in my teaching um, this is the most important skill that a person can have for their lifetime I have a question about the reading challenge. I know I'm it's I think it will help with their discipline too if kids have extra time after they've gotten their assignment done to have something that they have to be working on. But my question is, how are we going to are there adequate supplies of books in the classroom or is it something that they'll have to be handling uh, or <clears throat> doing when they go to the library, take out a book that they know is an accelerated reader book? How is the management of that? Is it something that teachers are going to be able to, will they have access to the books that are necessary for the kids to move on at their level? How will that be? How will that work? Thank you. I really appreciate the interest. I think our students will really benefit from this. So the good thing about this, one aspect of this uh, AR that we just purchased, it also has an online component called MyOn. So they have more than 20,000 books available to teach students in addition to checking books from their libraries. They can also read books online, which will also count when they take the quiz for reading challenge. So they have different ways of reading the books. Okay, and our teachers, I know it said they're going to be the ones that don't know how to use AR are going to be able to get more training. We have been that. doing ongoing trainings it's for our lot teachers. Of support for them because. Yeah, we've been training teachers there. We have done several uh, already and we still have many scheduled. It's usually after school and they get paid to attend. Okay. Well, should we ever get out, I get out to visit classrooms, you know, it'll be exciting to see kids working on AR in the classroom, because that program, if it's used right, not as this, not as the curriculum, but as this, an addition to the curriculum, can really help kids and move them forward. And I appreciate your comment, and I hope the teachers are, are really encouraged to do this. Whatever that child's interest is, I hope they're picking books out for that kid in that interest area, because, um, you're going to get more bang for your buck that way um and kids a lot of kids don't understand that a book is like magic and your magic book can make you go anywhere you want to but it has to be something that they're interested in or they don't want to do it and i know you know that but that's the heart of a reading teacher talking so <clears throat> thank you i too am looking forward to the science fair um when i was a principal um and i don't i probably shouldn't do, say this but i'm going to tell you anyway because a lot of teachers will hate me. <laughs> um, every single student at my school, the two schools I was at, participated every single year in science fair. Four through six had to have an individual project. K through three did a school wide, I mean, a classroom project. And at first, my teachers were like, we can't do that. That's too much. The kids really understood science, they understood. Um, how to put a project together from the very beginning and it was fun things in their classroom but my kids left my school understanding science and i'm very proud of that because i think we wouldn't have as much trouble that we've experienced the last three years that people really understood how science works um it just develops a really deep understanding i'm not saying everybody has to do that i'm just saying that was something i was really proud of doing and i turned my teacher's idea and belief in science 
to, they took them to a different place and they were all happy that they were able to do that with the kids. So I'm excited to see the science fair. I'm glad that we continually do this every single year. And I hope we can continue to get <clears throat> more and more um, participation each year. So thank you everyone for being here tonight. I'm, I'm <clears throat> looking forward to the rest of the school year and that graduation at the very end of the year. We are now go <clears throat> going to observe a moment of silence in order <clears throat> in honor of Terrace Hills Middle School teacher, Mr. Lunt, who recently passed away. Thank you. The board will now adjourn to the closed session to discuss the items listed on the closed session agenda.
We're back in session. In closed session, you put a number there, so you know the number. Oh. That's okay, I won't say it. <clears throat> I can't read that far away. <clears throat> in closed session on January 19th, 2023, the board took action to reject a tort claimed dated 12-222 filed by the former classified manager by unanimous vote. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along. <clears throat> <clears throat> Item 10.1, student matters. Second request to postpone expulsion hearing. <clears throat> the board received one request to grant a second postponement of an expulsion hearing. In accordance with the California Education Code 48918, the pupil should be entitled to a hearing to determine whether the pupil should be expelled. An expulsion hearing shall be held within 30 school days after the date the principal or the superintendent of schools determine that the pupil has committed any of the acts enumerated in section 48900 <clears throat> unless the pupil uh, request in writing that the hearing be postponed. The adopted rules and regulations shall specify that the pupil is entitled to at least one postponement of an expulsion hearing for a period of not more than 30 calendar days. Any additional postponement may be granted at the discretion of the governing board of the school district. <clears throat> is there a motion to approve the request to grant a second postponement of an expulsion hearing? So moved. <clears throat> um. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I have a motion by board member Fuentes <clears throat> and a second by board member Ibarra to approve the request to grant a second postponement of an expulsion hearing. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. <clears throat> All those opposed, nay. All those who wish to abstain. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> on motion of board member Fuentes and board member Ibarra and carried on a seven zero six zero damn sorry, we came out, okay. <clears throat> Vote. The board approved the second postponement of the expulsion hearing for student 1052892. Um, item <clears throat> 10.2 student di discipline. There were three student discipline items presented in closed session. <clears throat> Is there a motion to uphold the expulsion orders as presented? <clears throat> Who's that? Okay. I have a motion by board member Haro and a second by board member Bertha Flores to uphold the expulsion orders as presented. Call. <clears throat> All those in favor? Opposed? <clears throat> and no abstentions. Uh, on a motion by board member Haro. <clears throat> and board member Bertha Flores and carried on a 6-0 vote. The board upheld the expulsion order of three student discipline items as presented, 1057429, 1059020, and new to district. Item 10.3, personnel public employee appointment discipline dismissal release on a motion by board member Dan Flores and seconded by board member Israel Fuentes, the board approved the following personnel public employee <clears throat> appointment government code 54957, certificated coaches for head junior varsity baseball boys, head junior varsity softball girls, head <clears throat> varsity swim co ed, head junior varsity track co ed, certificate regular staff zero. 
classified management one, facilities project manager, classified coaches five, head varsity baseball boys two, head varsity softball girls, swimming assistant co ed, varsity soccer assistant girls, volunteer coaches zero, volunteer general eight. <clears throat> and with those, <clears throat> um, that, com <clears throat> that completes our. Uh, Meeting for today, and you, we will adjourn in memory of Terrace Hills Middle School teacher, Mr. Lunt. Good night. Oh, what time is it? 10.01 oh, is our closing time. I need to go. Oh, yeah, I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs>